Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden and today we're going to be pre-sprouting ranunculus and anemone corms. Okay, so pre-sprouting ranunculus and anemone corms is actually pretty simple. The hardest part about ranunculus and anemones is finding the right time to plant in your area. And that is something that I have messed up year after year. So finally, I feel that I am at the right time of year. I'm starting earlier in the year. I'm gonna be getting these out before it gets hot because anemones and ranunculus are both cool flowers. They love cooler weather. And once they get hot, they frizzle out and they're done for the year. And that is what has consistently happened with me in my Texas Zone 8A area. And so I've put them out, I've pre-sparted them typically in um, end of February into March, and then they go out and then we get some unseasonably warm weather and they're just gone, they're done. So I'm starting earlier, <laughs> even earlier, typically in my zone because ranunculus and anemones are actually hardy in zones eight to 10 and anemones seven to 10. They can be done, they can be started in the fall and then overwintered they do have a tendency to rot and then they can only handle temperatures to about 26 to 28 degrees um, lower than that you do need to go through the process of covering them um, things along those lines so i've never fussed with them in the fall because it seems like a lot of effort we'll see how it goes this spring if i have another just kind of sad um you know showing of blooms from these ranunculus and anemones then i'm going to start trying to start them in the fall and i'll start that this next fall but let's go ahead and give it a start now starting all my ranunculus and anemone corms now and then getting them outside and in the next hmm, two to four weeks uh, would be super exciting. Getting them started outside then, and then I'll be covering them for any of the cooler temps, and hopefully we'll get an early showing of blooms early in spring. Now, I saved a bunch of my ranunculus corms from earlier um, in the fall. I dug them all up. They look rough. They look real dead now. <laughs> Um, and that's kind of just how they look and basically I just pulled them up let them dry for three to four days toss them in a basket with a cloth over the top you can also put them in a brown paper bag whatever you store them in you want to make sure that it has really great airflow so we'll be starting these these are a mix of a whole bunch of varieties um, the one I'm most interested in is a butterfly variety in red and that is typically shown by these larger longer uh, corms like that so we'll be getting this this one is a mix there's about 50 or 60 in there then I also did some ordering um, from Longfield Gardens, and I will put uh, the video link to when I ordered these. I'll put that down below in the video description, so if you wanna hear a little bit more about the varieties that I, um, I ordered. But for now, what I'm gonna do is just kind of pop up a photo with the name so you can check it out. So I got the Ranunculus Tomer Picardy, and that is a pink white variety. I also got the Ranunculus Tomer Pink, and that is pink in color. I also got the Ranunculus Tomer Purple, which is obviously purple in color. In addition, I got the Ranunculus Tomer White. And finally, for Ranunculus, I got the Ranunculus Tecolote Salmon, which is a peachy kind of coral, coral color. And then, for uh, and then for anemones, I got St. Bridget the Governor, which is red, beautiful red. And anemone corns kind of look like hard rocks. I'll give you guys a close-up of them in a second. And then also for anemone, I get, got the St. Bridget Mount Everest, which is a white. And it's kind of really frilly, kind of pinwheel looking. Okay, so these are the anemone corms. They kind of look like weird rocks. They're super hard but they should double in size once we soak them. So I'll show you guys that process. There's, there's those. And then these are the ranunculus that I uh, dug up this past year. Some of them are really little, some of them are larger, just kind of depending. So we'll get all of these sucked up and these will definitely double in size as well. They totally look dead. Like if you didn't know it and you just saw this like laying around in your garden, you probably throw it away. <laughs> And then here's all the additional ranunculus corms from Longfield Gardens. They all look pretty good. 
All right, let me show you how to pre-soak these. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my plastic kind of soil mixing tray. It's waterproof and I feel like this will be better to make sure that I don't get water all over the table. And then of course I'm going to need it for mixing soil later. I don't have the big giant hard plastic soil mixing tray that a lot of gardeners have. I just, I just don't have the room for it. And so I've got this option. It is on my Amazon storefront. So if you're someone like me and you need a little bit more space, that'll work for, that'll, um, this'll work really well. So I've got a bigger container and I did everything in clear just so y'all could see better. And in this one, I'm going to dump all the ranunculus that I already had from my garden last year. In here, I had saved all of the plant labels. So the varieties I have in here are Butterfly Hades, Snowstorm, and Rhinette White. So basically, all I'm gonna be doing is, I've already got my labels there, so I'm gonna be adding water. And you want a lot of water in here. I mean, you really wanna give them the opportunity to kind of get down there and soak. Let me go grab some more. And what you're gonna do is give them a lot of water to kind of move in, and we're gonna be soaking these about three to four hours or until they've kind of doubled in size. You definitely don't wanna over soak your anemone or ranunculus bulbs because they will rot. So I've got this one going. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna make labels for all of these other varieties, and then I'm gonna fill them up with water, and then we'll chat after that. Okay, so I've got everything in water. They're all with their own separate ones. You wanna have lots of water moving around and basically you want to agitate these about every half hour. We're soaking for a total of at least three hours. You can go up to four. Anemones can handle a little bit more. They can do about four to six, whatever works best for you. I do highly encourage you to be observant of these. Um, you can definitely walk away, but don't walk away for like 12 hours. You will over soak them. They will rot and you will have nothing at the end. And we all know anemone and ranunculus corms are not cheap. So I'm kind of excited that I'm getting to use a lot from last year. And my goal is that this crop will grow each year and that I don't have to buy a bunch of new ones each year only if it's something I'm interested in a new variety or something. So I'm gonna agitate these about every 30 minutes. The reason I'm agitating them is just to keep oxygen in the water. You can definitely put these in a sink and allow water to like trickle over them. I don't find that that's necessary. And also I find like it feels very wasteful to me. Um, just to have that water spilling over. These at the end, I'll toss this water into some plants so that it's not all wasted. But we've got all that done. These are gonna be soaking for the next three to four hours, but let's talk a little bit more about ranunculus and anemones. Okay, we'll start with ranunculus. Ranunculus are a cool season flower, meaning that they prefer cooler uh, temperatures. So if you're in my particular area, zone 8A, we start hitting 90 degree weather mid-May. That's when a lot of people are just now hitting their spring. We start hitting some of the really hot tents and by June, we typically have our first um, day of triple degree weather, so 100 degrees or plus. So the, our ranunculus and our anemones need to be started much earlier in the year, if not in the fall, so that they have time to grow. They typically, these will take anywhere from like 10 to 12 weeks to bloom. So if you kind of count back from that, we're talking, you know, mid-May to be safe. We can count back to mid-April, mid-March, mid-February. So you can see that that's already at our 12 week point. That's why I'm actually starting a little bit earlier than I typically would because we ended up having kind of, you know, absurd warm temperatures earlier on in the spring than we typically do. Now, ranunculus are hardy in zones eight through 10. They are hardy in my zone. You can plant them in the fall and then overwinter them. If you choose to do that, you need to make sure that they don't get over watered because they can rot and you do need to protect them with some kind of hoop system frost cloth if temperatures are going to dip below 28 degrees 
for extended amount of time. They can handle it for a little bit, but if you're in my area, you know we've had, been having these ridiculous temps where we haven't been able to get, you know, some we got down to 10 degrees already this year, which is very abnormal for our area. So if you do decide to plant them in the fall, you will need to make sure that you protect them through each of these kind of weird bouts of colder weather that we have. Now, I do plan on planting these out probably mid-February, so I am going to have to watch them through the next four to six weeks until we get past of our last frost in case we have any weird weather where we're gonna get below 28 degrees. I also will have to pay attention if we have any crazy rainstorms where we rain for three, four, five days. I'm gonna have to make sure I actually shield them from that excessive rain as they can rot. Now, ranunculus, they bloom anywhere from 90 days on, um, you know, so that's about, um, let's see, 90 days, 12 weeks, all right? So any 10 to 12 weeks is when they typically start blooming. They will bloom for an extended time of around four to five weeks afterwards, which is fabulous. Um, you can start your corms in waves. So you could start some now, start some more in another week or another two weeks. I opted not to do that because it's something that I forget all the time. <laughs> Succession planting, planting is not my forte. I forget that I need to take care of that. So we're just gonna start them all off at once and enjoy them. And as I get better at this over the years, this is my third year working on this. After I get better over the years and better planning, I hope to really start some of these the first week in January and then start another round every two weeks so that I can have an extended amount of blooms. Now also with ranunculus, you can dig these up at the end of the season. You can do the same thing with anemones. You wanna allow them to bloom you want to allow the greens to continue to green up enjoy all the sunny weather and then once they start to dry up and die back the green the leaves portion that's when you can go ahead and pull them up cut them back allow them to sit out and dry for three to four days and then toss them in a brown bag or some area where they're going to get some really good air circulation tuck them into a nice dry dark place and you should be good until you're ready to plant them the next season okay anemones follow a lot of those same uh, um, elements that I was talking about with ranunculus, but there are a few things that are different. Anemones are hardy in zones of seven to 10. They're also known as a wind flower. So if you hear that said, there's a couple of different varieties of anemones, these particular anemones, but then there's also Japanese anemones, which I also grow a couple of varieties of Japanese anemones. Those bloom in the fall. Whereas this particular varieties of anemones, these are what's gonna bloom in early spring. Typically the anemones and the ranunculus corms are gonna take anywhere from about one and a half to two weeks to sprout once we get them all ready to go in their trays. I also wanted to point out that the water that I'm utilizing is room temp water. So don't use really cold water or really hot water. You know, don't use from the faucet outside if it's really cold and don't heat up your water. If you're worried about it, I just use straight from the kitchen sink. I allowed all the cold water to run out until it kind of warmed up some and then I use that water or you can go ahead and fill like a couple of pitchers or jugs with water, allow it to sit out overnight, and then you have room temperature water. Okay, now all we have to do is wait for these to soak, and once they're done, I'm gonna lay out some seedling trays, we're gonna use some moist soil, and we're gonna get these covered up and ready for sprouting. Sprouting, sprouting, sprouting. I said that really weird, sprouting. <laughs> okay, while those are finishing up, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some soil. This is just regular potting mix. Ah! And I want it to be moist. I don't want it to be like dripping, <laughs> but I definitely want it to have moisture in it so that the corms don't dry out real fast. Okay, so I'm gonna start with just a plastic seedling tray and I'm gonna add a layer of soil across the bottom. 
just like that. All right, and then I'm gonna start with one set of corms. And I'm basically gonna nestle their little tendrils down into the soil. You can put them pretty close together. Um, it's pretty easy to pull up them apart later with um, their roots. But basically all of their little octopus legs are gonna go downwards. All right, and after I do that, I'm gonna make sure I put my label right there. I'll give them a little space in between. I don't really mind if they end up getting mixed up a little bit. When they bloom, we'll be able to tell what they are. Okay, and then once I've got my tray filled, I'm just gonna come across with the soil. These don't want light, so we wanna make sure everybody gets covered up really well. All right, there we go. There is one tray done. Okay, so we've got them all um, soaked. They all soak for between three and four hours. And then I put them in moist potting soil. So we put a layer of potting soil down first. I put all of the ranunculus with their little tendrils going down. The anemone I just tossed in there. Um, you should be able to see some eyes of the anemone when it starts sprouting afterwards. And then you'll know which direction to put it afterward um, when you plant about in the garden. And then we covered everything with a good layer of moist potting soil as well. The goal is to cut off the light. These need darkness to go ahead and get started to pre-sprout. And that's how their uh, sprouts will start reaching for light. And I'm gonna store them on this table for now. Um, I'm not looking for a bunch of extra lights. I'm not gonna put them under anything over here, anything like that. Oh, I just looked over and I saw 
I see viola seeds have germinated. Alyssum has germinated. And looks about it. Huh. All right. Anyway, exciting. Um, and so we're good to go. So I will post an update in about, it's typically going to be 10 to 14, maybe a little bit longer days until we see these sprouting up. And so I'll post an update at that time so that you can see what my next step is going to be for doing them. I'll have to make a decision of whether I want to go ahead and plant them outside in one of the raised beds and set up some hoops, which is really what I'm leaning for because I don't have a lot of room to, you know, get all these underneath the lights in here. So truthfully, that's what I'm end up doing. I do have a bed I need to prep and get ready for these, but that'll probably be the end goal to get all of these into that raised bed, put up some hoops to protect it from any kind of um, temperatures that drop below 28 degrees. And hopefully we'll have a really great crop of ranunculus and anemones this year. All right, you all, I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you check out the community tab on my YouTube channel page. You just go to She's a Bad Gardener on YouTube and you'll see several tabs of cross, which is like photos and about and community. The community tab I try to post every other day and all of that content is original content that is not on my other social media platforms. Also, I am on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, and you can check me out for fun reels and interesting ideas and thoughts on there as well. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.